What's up everyone, Jim and Clint here to talk about some James Bond 25 stuff going on in the news. They need a director, so Danny Boyle is out. That was officially announced earlier this week, and now we're back in the rumor stage and reports of who might replace him. And one of the people on the uh, short list, according to Deadline, is Edgar Wright, the Cornetto trilogy, and of course the man who didn't make Ant-Man. Right. What, what do you think are the odds that Edgar Wright might actually make a James Bond movie? I think the odds that he actually makes one are pretty low. Yeah. It, it feels uh, like, I mean, the thing that he's got going for him right now is that they are backed into a corner with this release date. Like, yeah. the movie's supposed to come out next November, so they really gotta start making it pretty soon. So it might be a, a situation where Eon can't really argue with the director that they choose anymore because it's yeah. just like, look, we got, a, we got a date to make. I still don't really see it happening for Edgar Wright for some reason. I feel like he's so specific uh, yeah. in his style. I mean, th that being said, Danny Boyle was too. Yeah. Um, and so Danny Boyle was a strange choice also. And I feel like Edgar Wright falls into that same category. So. Yeah, and we should say too with Danny Boyle, I mean, he does have that same sort of very kinetic kind of style, but his, his uh, involvement was always you know, hinging on that, that John Hodge script, right. and there, evidently there were some issues with that script, so that's why he walked, and as well as some casting issues. Uh, but I think Edgar Wright, yes, he would be an interesting choice, for no other reason than now he would know what Peyton Reed felt like when he walked into <laughs> Ant-Man. I, I think, though, that Edgar is maybe a little pie in the sky, but we'll see, I mean, he could, he could just be exactly the shot in the arm that they need. I do think it would be a blast of a James yeah. Bond film. My, because my personal favorite James Bond films are the campier ones. They're the ones oh. I like. I'm a Roger Moore James yeah. Bond fan, so like I do appreciate uh, I, that Edgar Wright would bring some of that energy back to it. I assume that he would anyway. Than than how sort of dour Daniel Craig's run has been. Um, I, I think it'll be interesting though if they do, because some of these other candidates, and we should just rattle off a few names yeah. here, are stylistically very different from what an Edgar Wright or Danny Boyle would have brought. So to me it says like, do they even know what they want their movie to be? Because a David McKenzie uh, James Bond movie, and he did Hell or High Water, and he's got The Outlaw King with Chris yeah. Pine coming up on Netflix. That to me suggests an incredibly different style of Bond movie than what Edgar would have done or, Dan or might do or what Danny Boyle would have done. Jean-Marc Valley, who did Dallas Buyers Club, he's, you know, Big Little Lies and stuff. Uh, Jan Demange, uh, and i sorry if I got your name on Jan, but he has White Boy Rick coming up and then he did a really good movie a couple of years ago called 71. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Denis Villeneuve, but I don't think that's, that's happening because he's gonna be doing Duke. Chris McQuarrie has also been mentioned as a possibility. He's an American filmmaker, and of course he's done the last two Mission Impossible movies. Right. In a way, he's the most fitting candidate. Yeah. Uh, but this is if you look at the Bond franchise in a larger sense, it's been a very reactive franchise uh, since, I mean, basically after Connery's run, because it basically looks at, you know, uh, it reacts to what's going on in the rest of cinema. Like the type of action movie that it becomes is sort of borrowing from whatever yeah. was just most recently popular. You know, like the most recent example with Craig's reboot came on the heels of the Bourne Identity and, and that sort of uh, that sort of thing. Uh, Batman Begins was another big influence on Daniel Craig's run, I think, too. Star Wars gave us Moonraker. Sure, exactly, exactly. You it's like, oh, the man, more, Star more Wars was you great. just said that. So, they, yeah. yeah, well, to the point where they even, <laughs> after, at the end of The Spy Who Loved Me, they said the next one was going to be For Your Eyes only, yeah. and then Star Wars came out, and they were like, oh, never mind, let's ah. do Moonraker. And so that's why, <laughs> part of the reason why it's so bad is because they did it at the last minute. Uh, so doing things at the last minute is not unusual for the Bond franchise, but uh, but stealing Christopher McQuarrie from the Mission Impossible franchise would be very appropriate. It's something that they haven't, <laughs> they haven't so directly borrowed from a franchise that's doing Bond better than Bond has been doing for the past couple of movies, I think, because uh, uh, Rogue Nation and Fallout are, yeah. are two of the best James Bond films of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> Which is weird because James, uh, because Mission Impossible was a reaction to Bond. Yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's amazing how pop culturally it just snake is just eating itself. Yeah, yeah um, I think it'll be really interesting at this point in time if this movie even keeps its November 2019 release date because it would necessitate, regardless, a script overhaul. Yeah. Uh, and writing it that quickly, 
you were kind of stuck then with the script and, and you know, will you be any further ahead creatively with that rush thing than if you had just stuck with Danny Boyle's one? And I think a lot of it will come down to Daniel Craig. Too. Yeah. I think a lot of it will come down to how he wants to, to end his tenure as Bond uh, and how much Eon is willing to listen to him yeah. on, on that regard. Because I, I can't imagine he wants a rushed, not ideal James Bond as his last entry. Um, so That's pushing what it. Quantum of Solace was for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've been down that well, road. That was the writer's strike, all kinds yeah. of stuff. All kinds of problems with that one. But if Daniel Craig is like, look, I want to do this right. I got one more in me. So if it's, if it's instead of November 29th, if it's May of, of 2020 or sometime yeah. in the summer, like I know traditionally it's a fall sort of franchise, but um, I, don't, I don't see, it's not like there are rights issues holding it up or anything like that, that they got like Star Trek was, that they have to have one on the 50th anniversary or something yeah. like that. All right, well, that's what we think about what's going on right now with the James Bond franchise, the Edgar Wright of it all. What do you think? Would he make a great James Bond film? Do you think it's even a reality that he would do it? Let us know in the comments for more James Bond. Check out what we had to say about the next James Bond stars that never played James Bond, as well as the uh, news video we have about Christopher McQuarrie maybe being up for James Bond 25. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe to IGN on the platform of your choice.